This is Pastor Thomas Joseph again, and we're coming with today's word. We are in another uh, message concerning spiritual growth, and it's been very amazing to me. I love this subject because it stimulates us to think about where are we in Christ? Are we growing in the Lord? Are we babies still? We went over signs of being babies last week. Paul mentioned this in 1 Corinthians. He said, are you, he said, you all are yet carnal. He said, when there's strife and envying among you, he said, you guys are like babies. So if, if you're dealing with strife, envying, jealousy, things like that, then you need to grow spiritually. See, growing spiritually affects your character. So growing up spiritually means you're becoming more like Jesus Christ. You're, you're gaining self-control. You're gaining um, a heart that's able to show God's fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. All his peace, love, joy, righteousness, you know, coming out of you. And spiritual growth is shown when a lot of, a lot of times you could see when pressure is put on people. When you're in, a, in the, a trial, when you're going through tribulation and, and things are not going too good in the outward, are you able to maintain that character of Christ? Or do you get into anger, wrath, bitterness? That, so that shows what level you're at if you're growing spiritually. So we're looking at, in the Word of God, how we can explore enough to find God, the meat that God's talking about, the meat of the Word of God. So we're going to look again, in, starting in Hebrews 5, let's go to verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful or inexperienced in the Word of Righteousness, for he is a baby. So there's an experience you have. If you don't have much experience in the Word, that means you're a baby. You know, you're just using milk. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even to those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So that word senses is your perception. Your perception needs to be exercised. We talked a little bit about this uh, the last time where you must practice perceiving God's word. Practice getting the understanding of the word. When you look at a scripture, don't just read it and pass by it. Read it, meditate on it. Uh, I love the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, which has the Greek and Hebrew dictionaries, where you can look up the exact word and look up the meanings and write it, write it down, you know, and meditate on it. That gets your senses exercised. That puts you in a habit, a practice of receiving God's word. And so those that are a full age, you know, that means you're starting to grow spiritually in that way to, to be able to discern good and evil. And your, your perception is, is growing where naturally, I mean, spiritually, but in your natural life, whatever you face, you're able to tell, is this good? Is this evil? Uh, is this something valuable? Uh, you could discern a lot better when you are a full age, you know, when you're growing spiritually. Let's look at what Jesus said about this in Matthew 13 and 14. It's nice to be able to read from a real Bible sometimes. Got my real Bible right here. I love studying, though, in the electronic versions. Because you can get the definitions a lot faster and things like that. But here we are, Matthew 13. And let's read what Jesus said. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which says, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. 
In other words, you can have someone in the church hearing the word naturally, seeing the preacher preach, hearing the word. Uh, you can see it, you know. We put Bible scriptures right on the screen right there. But they're not actually getting it. They're not perceiving it. They're not um, being able to tell what is really being said. So that speaks of being dull of hearing. So Jesus talked about this more. He said, for this people's heart is wax gross. That means their heart has become callous, thickened, thickened, fattened, wax gross. It means to stupefy, actually, because we're talking about a spiritual heart. Heart is your thoughts and your feelings. So when there is like a callousness in, in people's perception, Jesus could stand right there in front of in front of you and he could be telling you the truth and you could be not getting it, you know, because this is what happened back then. The religious people were the ones that were actually supposed to be experienced in the scripture. And they were the ones rejecting the truth. Jesus told them, you don't even know the scripture at one point. He said, you don't know the scriptures. He said, you, he said, search the scripture. He said, in them you think you have eternal life. He said, and the scriptures are they which testify of me. He said, I'm the one standing here and you're not getting it. I'm telling you who I am, but you're not perceiving it. So, this people's heart in verse... Uh, Chapter 13, verse 15, this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. Their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. So Jesus is talking about understanding. Have an understanding heart. That is how you grow spiritually by receiving the understanding of the word. You don't grow in the Lord by going to church and just sitting there and not receiving the word. You can go week after week. You can go three times a week to church. And if you're just there not receiving the word, you're not growing in the Lord. You know, and, you know, let me mention this. I've seen times when churches, you know, they have the deacon staff or the ushers or whatever. And you'll see the same deacons standing in front of the church the whole time. So I've always said, you know, that's not good because that deacon is that deacon is going to shrivel up and die without getting a good balance of the word of God. He needs to be in church too. So what would be a solution? Well, maybe have a rotating shift at least or something like that. So if you're a deacon or an usher, make sure... Make sure yourself that you're able to hear the word of God when you go to church. Of course, if you're going to a church where they are preaching the word, you know. First of all, you want to make sure you go to the church where they're, where they're teaching the real word of God. Um, there could be a lot of hype going on. There could be a lot of hollering and a lot of religious activity. It doesn't mean you're getting fed the word of God. You know, there are um, people... And a, a lot of times the evil spirits work to do this where they get people used to a religious system and they go through so much religious programs. And man, you know, sometimes you go to church. I've seen churches where, okay, praise and worship is great, you know. But then, okay, you know, we got to get this sister in to give her A selection and this one to give a B selection. And then, you know, it takes... 20 minutes just to introduce the pastor sometimes, you know, and then he comes up and then he got to sing the same old song that he'd been singing for 20 years and, and, and go through a whole religious motion, you know, and then finally, you know, after people have worn themselves out, you know, now it's time for the word, you know, and um, hopefully by all that, when all that time goes on, they, they, they're given a good word, you know, if so, you know, then praise the Lord, you know, but sometimes there's so much, so much emotionalism and things like that where it's a lot of hype it's a lot of fleshly stuff going on believe me and it's not really 
giving a good situation for people to grow in Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of times people are promoting their ministry. They're promoting how great the pastor is and this and that. And they're not even promoting Jesus sometimes. And, and that will cause the person not to grow spiritually. Jesus is the door. He's the way. He's the truth and the life. He's everything we need. So uh, let's look at more what Jesus said here. He says, verse 16, But blessed are your eyes, for, ye, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. He was talking to his apostles. He said, you all are blessed because you're receiving the word. You're understanding who I am. I'm right here and you know me. He said, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them. So he said, there was a time when I, this truth you're looking at it cannot be revealed. They desired to see me. They desired to know who I am and how I would be, but they couldn't see. He said, but blessed are your eyes for they see. And he said, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things, they, but they couldn't see. And hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. So back in the days, you know, where there was many prophets prophesying about Jesus and there was righteous men, Jesus said. They were looking to see, what, how would this Messiah come? What would this be? What would be the salvation of the Lord? How would this turn out? And they couldn't see it because the timing was wrong. We're going to look, at, look more into this, and I, I might even preach this on Sunday, I'm not sure yet, how the timing of the Lord ha has a lot to do with everything and we're in a great time right here because the revelation of Jesus is being released. Uh, we're understanding things that were hidden from generations. And even when, when Jesus was talking there, that was a great opening up of understanding of God. That was a great uh, revelation of who the father was. And Jesus was showing all these great things and so he was like, you all are blessed. And that's why when the apostles finally saw the whole thing, they, they witnessed the Lord Jesus on the cross and then dying and rising to life. I mean, they had the message of life burned into them. Uh, and then after the Holy Spirit came, they were able to boldly proclaim and the gospel is still being preached to this day. And it, it, it basically has covered the whole world pretty much, I think. Um, you know, except for some various villages here and there, you know, but now, you know, we do have nations, of course, that are strongholds of Islam where they don't allow the gospel to be freely preached. But we believe that, uh, you know, that, that the gospel will reach all the world. Jesus said in the end will come then. Now we're in a day when the revelation of Jesus is freely given. But thousands of years before Jesus came, he was saying many desired to see what you see and would not see them. If they could have just saw Jesus or even been, in, been born in the time we're in, after Jesus came and after he brought the reformation and after he brought um, restoration of our relationship with God through his own blood, they would have loved to, be, to see this time on earth. And they didn't see it because it wasn't time. Now, this is the time. But do we desire to see? See, he said many of them have desired to see. This word desires means they set their heart upon the Lord. They were setting their heart. They longed for the Lord to show them what this Messiah would be. And they couldn't see because the timing now, this is the time. Are you setting your heart upon the Lord to receive what is, what is freely get, being given out? So let's focus our attention on the Lord. Let's desire to see those things which he has for us. That's how we sharpen our perception. Be diligent. Be excited to hear the word. Be excited to read the word. Be excited what God is going to talk to you in the word. Meditate on the word. Eat that word up. 
and you will grow spiritually. So that's all the time we have for today. Amen. I thank God we're able to share this. Um, I think, um, you know, definitely, if you're not aware, we do have a Sunday service, which goes live on Facebook. And then we often get it posted on YouTube as well. But we will be there at the Father's House Church. It's at 2819 West 71st Street in Chicago. You could come live in Chicago to the church or catch us on Facebook, my Facebook page, Thomas Joseph. You can catch us at 11 a.m. Chicago time. And then thank you for subscribing to these YouTube videos, share them with people. If, if you could press that like button and comment, that promotes the video. All for free, but it promotes it. It's really good. And so God bless you. I pray that you are growing in the Lord spiritually. I pray for the grace of the Father to be upon you, to give you the spirit of understanding, to perceive the things of Jesus, to perceive what the Holy Spirit is saying about Jesus to you, that you may grow up in Christ, that we may grow together in one body, in the unity of the faith through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that through Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Speak the name of Jesus.